So in this lesson, we're going to explore the hormones involved in the female reproductive system. This is a very high yield point for HSC biology as it's often difficult to understand for students and hence it's easy to distinguish lower and higher band students in exams. Now before we even talk about hormones, let's talk about what they are. Hormones are simply chemical messengers that travel in the body. They travel in the bloodstream and there are three different types. You have hormones that are derived from steroids. So these are your lipid derivative hormones. You have your long polypeptide chain hormones, which consist of a long chain of individual amino acids. You also have hormones that are only one amino acid in size. All hormones will bind to some receptor and cause some action. Hence, they're called chemical messengers. Now, all hormones are controlled by a master regulator. The master regulator is the hypothalamus of the brain. The hypothalamus is located right here. And if I zoom in on the right, you can see the hypothalamus here. You should also note the hypothalamus is intimately connected with this ball-like structure called the pituitary gland. Now what happens is a hypothalamus releases a hormone, which will then travel down here, bind to receptors, and control the release of hormones from the pituitary gland. The hormones from the pituitary gland will then travel in the blood all the way to a distant target site. In our case, it's going to be the ovaries. Now let's have a zoom in look at the actual hormonal feedback loop here. So as I said, it all starts with the release of a master control hormone by the hypothalamus. In the case of pregnancy, the hormone is gonadotropin releasing hormone. So after the onset of puberty, all females and males release this hormone from their hypothalamus. This hormone will then travel down, act on the anterior pituitary, anterior meaning the front of the pituitary, as you can see here. And that'll control the release of other hormones, as you can see here. The two key hormones you need to know that are released by the anterior pituitary are your FSH, which stands for follicle stimulating hormone, and your LH, which stands for luteinizing hormone. FSH is involved in the maturation of follicles in the ovary. So as you can see, this tiny primordial follicle growing into a mature follicle, that is catalyzed by the action of follicle stimulating hormone. You also have the release of luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary. Now, it's very hard to know this, the luteinizing hormone at day 14 is what causes the release of the ova. So this process of releasing the ovary from the ovary is caused by luteinizing hormone. These hormones will travel in the bloodstream and act on the ovary. So all the pink you see, the granulosa and theca cells, it's not important to note what they are. All you need to know is they act on the ovary. And at the ovary, they act specifically at the follicle. And they cause the release of estrogen, and also progesterone. So progesterone is a type of androgen. So to recap, FSH and LH travel to the ovary and cause the release of estrogen and progesterone. Now it's very commonly asked what estrogen and progesterone do. So you must know, estrogen stimulates the growth of the uterine lining. The uterine lining is also commonly known as the endometrium. Progesterone is important for maintaining the uterine lining, and that prevents muscle contractions as well. Why do they do these specific actions, you might ask? Let's go back and look at the process of implantation. Now, you have to understand the embryo has implanted into the uterine lining. 
We want the estrogen, which is released by the ovary here, to continue traveling and growing the endometrium and filling it with nutrients for the incoming embryo. We also want progesterone to maintain this lining and prevent it from shedding as the embryo has already implanted. As we said, the progesterone also prevents muscle contractions. You don't want that to happen, otherwise you will destroy the implanted embryo and pregnancy will not continue. And that concludes our summary of the pregnancy and reproductive system feedback loops.